spot. <laughs> it's not very good. Obviously, we are all uh, staying home and trying to be safe and healthy. So let me just uh, directly jump into my uh, presentation. It's going to be uh, uh, I have a I have a deck for you, which I'm going to present. I think we have about thirty minutes or so, and uh, after that, I you know we can do some Q and A's. Can everyone hear me? I guess so, right? Sure, you can hear me, right? We can hear you. Please come. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, so the, the topic is innovative marketing methods for aesthetic medicine practitioners and clinics to explore uh, amid this COVID-19 crisis. So today we are gonna go through uh, these topics. Uh, we will start with some basic essentials or one-on-ones that you should have already taken care of, I believe. If not, we can go through that quickly. We'll talk about uh, what do you do in terms of marketing uh, during this period. And then there are certain other things like you can pay attention to, uh, especially during this period, like reviews, recommendations, testimonials, how can you, you know, some, certain ideas, how you can create some new content. We can go over the annual marketing plan and then we can touch upon email marketing, social media marketing. And then obviously at the end, uh, you know, how to build a best in class website. So let's just jump in. So there are really three basic essentials. Uh, essential number one is keep your clients or your patients informed. It's very important, right? Everybody is going through a very uh, tough time at this point. Uh, you uh, you might have uh, you might have to close your clinic. Probably in India, you've closed your clinics, uh, or maybe you're uh, just temporarily closed, um, uh, just attending to emergencies. Uh, or you may have changed uh, certain products or services that you've offered, right? So it's very important that you update all this information, not just now, but uh, throughout this period, because uh, things are going to change, right? I mean, now we, I think in India, we're in the phase two of the lockdown uh, until May 3rd. Uh, hopefully things will start getting better. You will start reopening or maybe on the limited hours. Um, and maybe for limited services. So whatever your, whatever your situation is, uh, very, very important to update that information. Now, where do you want to update it? Obviously you want to update it on all your online channels. So that includes your website, make it very prominent on the homepage of your website. So uh, people visiting your site know what's going on. Uh, you should update your social media pages and most importantly, you know, don't forget your Google business profile. Uh, people, if you're getting a lot of traffic where people are searching for you uh, organically and you know, coming to your clinic, uh, it's important to uh, go to your business profile and update that information there. So that's essential number one. Uh, here are some examples that you know, we work with some clients. <clears throat> some examples of how we have handled this uh, uh, for them, uh, you know, putting up the message that is relevant to their clinic. I mean, on the right-hand side, you'll see a hair loss clinic in the US. I mean, they are not completely closed, but they are open for limited hours. Uh, in India, I think the situation is a little different. So whatever it might be, right? So it's very important to update this on your website. Essential number two is uh, if you're running any ads, it's very important that you uh, change your ads, right? Because uh, again, uh, you want to, you're spending money on ads. You want to make sure that you're promoting the right products or the services that you are offering during this time, uh, period of time. And you know, for example, that might be, let's say uh, you're really not doing any procedures. Uh, you're not seeing any patients in the clinic but maybe you've just started virtual uh, consultation. So that's a message, right? That's a message that you want to change on your ads. Um, you want to adjust the budget. Uh, and if you have, if you want to spend anything on ads <laughs> during this period, I think, you know, the best strategy is to focus more on branding and 
than conversions. I mean, you're not going to get any conversions in this period, right? I mean, that's a no-brainer. No, nobody's going to uh, be able to come to your clinic. You don't want them to come to your clinic for safety of yours, you know, for your safety, for their safety. So really, you know, uh, at this time, what do you do if you have any money on uh, to spend on ads? Branding is the you know the best way to do it. Um, and you know, the other thing is some points that you should consider is people are home. They are uh, spending a lot of time online. They're spending a lot of time on their devices. Um, on the other hand, uh, a lot of the regular ads that you see have been pulled down. So what that means is um, ad rates have gone down. Uh, so you know, obviously you can stretch your dollar, you can advertise more at a lower cost. So if you have some money to spend, yes, do spend it, use it on branding. Essential number two. And the last one is um, really, you know, adapting to the situation that we are in right now, right? I mean, probably uh, this is a very unprecedented times. Nobody thought about this before. Nobody thought that you could not go to your clinic for weeks together. So uh, how do you adapt? I mean, if you have not been doing, uh, you know, some people probably were doing some sort of video consultations before. Um, if you're not doing that, uh, maybe it's a good idea to jump onto it. We have helped a lot of our clients set this up. We have a product for, uh, you know, the virtual video consultations end to end. Uh, and it's a great tool for first consultations, right? With new patients. When you're talking to your patients or clients the first time, they, they have a lot of questions. And a, a lot of that, a lot of the discussion is really clinical that you're just kind of discussing their concerns maybe uh, charting out a plan of treatment for them. So this is the best time to you know, do those kind of things. What, does, what this does is uh, you're there for your patients uh, to answer their questions. Uh, you, know, you have plenty of time at this point, they have plenty of time. Uh, this, is a, you know, th th this is something that is gonna work out for uh, both of you in terms of time. And it just generates a lot of leads which will convert into patients when you reopen. <clears throat> so this is important. Uh, if you're not into the virtual video consultations, it's a great idea to jump onto it now. Again, uh, make sure that you know streamlining of it end to end is important. I mean, you should make it easy for your patients to book appointments with you uh, on your calendar. Uh, they should be easy. It, it should be easy for them to join the meetings uh, and uh, make make payments online if you're charging them some kind of a consultation fee. Uh, so all this is important, right? <clears throat> So now having just gotten, uh, having gone through all the basic essentials, I'm, I hope that you, know, you guys have probably uh, uh, taken care of most of these things. And if you have not, then it's still not late. You should, do, uh, you, should do, you should take care of these things right now, because I think there's still a period of two weeks of lockdown and don't, don't, don't expect that things are gonna change uh, right away overnight, right after May 3rd. And this is, an, this is an example of a client that we have where we have just announced that they are now open for virtual video consultations, you know, using social media, using their website. So yes, I mean, you need to uh, make those announcements, make people aware that you are available for them for any kind of virtual video consultations if you are uh, gonna jump into it. <clears throat> so having said that, let's jump into uh, <clears throat> marketing how do you do marketing during this COVID-19 crisis, right? And, you know, before we go there, why don't we just look at the term marketing, right? I mean, what is marketing? So, I mean, marketing, the way it's defined in the dictionary is, it's like an action or it's like a business of promoting and selling your goods or selling your goods or services or your services and procedures or whatever you offer. But really, if you think about it, it's much more than that, right? Marketing is not just that anymore. It's not just about selling. It's really boils down to building relationships with your clients, getting to know them, connecting with them, uh, getting them interested in you and you know, building that trust. So you know, you're, you're their doctor uh, and uh, you're the one that they uh, want to trust for the best advice uh, you know, that they can get, uh, especially in this period, you know, you, you may have some existing patients, uh, they may be concerned that they have an appointment uh, uh, with you at some point, which they cannot do now. So what happens? 
especially where there are recurring sessions, right? I mean, you have a PRP sessions with someone. Okay, now what happens? I took one session. Uh, now the next appointment is in next week. Uh, I cannot make it. I mean, you cannot do that. So what happens to that? And how does their treatment <clears throat> go with that kind of uh, situation that we are into right now? So yes, I mean, uh, <clears throat> that, is, that is what they're looking for, right? So it's really building relationships. So what do you do in this uh, COVID-19 crisis uh, in terms of marketing? I mean, I, you know, short-term marketing tactics, I think just stop doing all of that, right? I mean, when I say short-term marketing tactics, it's really, uh, you know, sales, discounts, I mean, none of that is gonna work, right? Uh, if you want to focus on anything short-term, I mean, just limit it to specific services that are relevant to this period. I mean, an example again would be the virtual consults. So maybe that, that's what you can do in terms of short-term. Uh, really what you want to do in this period is focus on the long-term marketing tactics. So invest in your brand, uh, you know, build your brand, connect with your patients, um, engage with them, educate them, you know, build that trust. So that is overall, uh, you know, the approach that you want to take for this period. Now we'll jump into the specifics of how do you do it, right? Because that's the most important part. So let's, let's move on. Um, so let's uh, first talk about reviews, recommendations, testimonials, right? I mean, you're, you're, you have your staff, which is home. Uh, they have plenty of time as well, right? I mean, there's no clinic. They're not, they're not coming to the clinic. So one thing is, you know, you could ask your staff to go through all the visits in the last six months or more and then call each of those patients and check on them, right? Um, check on them, how are they, they're safe, they're healthy, um, if they're happy with your practice. And then, you know, once you start that conversation with them, uh, it, it's not a bad idea to ask them to give you a review on Google, Facebook. You know, you can make it easy by sending them a link. And, you know, typically uh, people, you know, they have time now, uh, you know, and they, they will, uh, you, you should get a good response. In fact, some of the clients that I'm working with, uh, th this has worked out very well with them. You know, they are, they are getting reviews. Now, let me, let me tell you something that uh, G Google reviews, uh, Google has stopped posting the reviews online. Meaning, uh, they, you know, if someone gives you a review, it's not gonna be visible on your uh, Google listing right away in this period. And, you know, they've done that uh, specifically to protect uh, all these small businesses from any kind of malicious, uh, um, reviews or, you know, uh, so, something to sabotage other businesses, you know, a lot of bad practices also start, uh, you know, coming up in, in, in the bad times, right? People do all, all sorts of things. But, but let, let me assure you what happens is if you ask your patient to give you a review, the review is queued up and when things open up, you know, you would have just collected some good positive reviews for your clinic. So that's number one, right? Um, important. That's, that's how you tackle this. Now, the next thing is obviously um, content. Content is king. And, you know, if you have some spare time, which probably you do, I think it's a great idea to sit down and start putting some content together, which then you can give it to your agency and they can just distribute it on your website, social media, etc. So the first piece of content is Q and A's, right? I mean, what are Q and A's? Uh, Q and A's are questions and answers. And that's really a great way to rank on Google. Uh, if you search on Google, you will see that on the search results, there's a section called as people also ask. And, you know, Google kind of just figures out all these queries and the top queries that are coming in. And they try to match up those queries with answers from websites. If you, you know, the, the approach that you would take here is, you know, you kind of try to write down those questions exactly how uh, the patients ask you, because that's, that's the way that they are really searching on Google, right? The way they ask you. And if you uh, put your answers together, exactly the way you would explain it to any uh, patient in your clinic, that that's what is important, right? I mean, your voice, your philosophy, or your style approach, your tone of uh, how you talk, this is all. This all brings this unique uh, character to all your content that you're producing in terms of answers and question and answers, right? And this is what uh, make, will make you rank. So, I mean, the tip here is uh, try to sit down for uh, some time and 
Every day you can kind of put that into discipline where you write about six to eight question answers. Um, and then, you know, once you've collected a bunch of them, work with your agency to uh, publish them. That's, that's a great idea. So the next piece of content is, and this is an example of uh, that people also ask section on the Google search. If, if you, you probably have noticed this when you've been searching. Next thing is videos. So now if you have your um, um, question answers as a written up material, uh, why not convert that into short videos? I mean, videos are, you know, videos uh, basically give you a lot of engagement. People like to see videos. People like to see their doctor talk. Um, so, you know, shoot, shoot some videos, convert those Q and A's into short videos. You can also pick like one procedure, you know, a day or something like that and try to just uh, put together some kind of a informational video on that procedure. Um, you know, a research has shown that um, uh, videos, I mean, the, the, I, I don't think I have to tell you this, you guys, you guys watch a lot of videos too, I'm sure. So <clears throat> videos get the best engagement in general overall, right? Now, uh, uh, <clears throat> the question is, how do you make these videos? <clears throat> so really, you don't need any fancy equipment. Uh, you can just use your smartphone, which has, you know, already has a good quality camera in it. And just make sure that you have good lighting. Uh, try to use uh, white light or daylight. That works very well with videos. Uh, try to <clears throat> do the videos uh, in a landscape format. Don't try to do the verticals because, I mean, you know, I know that Instagram, uh, you have all these vertical videos or square videos, really. But if you do it in the landscape format, um, it's very easy to convert them into any other format. So that's the best practice is to do it in a horizontal or a landscape format. And you know, as I said, you know, just use your equipment. You don't have to over productionize those videos. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, people like to see videos that are organic, meaning, you know, not, not too much production into it, right? not too much editing, not too much music and uh, animations. They just want to see the doctor talk, you know, just naturally the way they are sitting in front of the doctor and uh, talking to the doctor, right? That's how it works. So that's videos. Uh, before afters, yeah. I mean, I've been uh, talking to so many of my clients and uh, they say, hey, you know, we have, uh, we have a lot of pictures before and afters, but hey, you know, it's in our camera roll and we've just not gotten time to uh, sort them out. Uh, well, you could use this time, you know, to do that, I mean, uh, go through your camera roll, uh, look at the before afters, organize them by procedure, pick the best ones where you've gotten the best results. Um, of course, make sure that you have the patient's consent before uh, you, know, you use any of these video, uh, before afters for marketing. Watermark your pictures, uh, you know, hide the face where you know, if, not, if it's not a procedure on the face uh, or then hide the eyes, uh, make sure you kind of uh, uh, conceal the identity of the patient. Uh, and the tip, the biggest tip here is, you know, if you, if you feel the need to label your before after pictures, then your picture is not good enough to put up online. I mean, you can use that as a thumb rule. <laughs> so I, I, I think the best, the best way the, these things work is you put up a picture and the patient exactly knows, or, you know, who is watching that online knows what is before and knows what is after. So, you know, sometimes, you know, you can even, use this kind of material to create some kind of uh, contest or you know, like a quiz online on social media where you put this before after and let the patients guess what that procedure was in comments. So there are a lot of these things that you can do. So you know, this content is very, very useful and uh, most of you probably have it. Uh, so you know, mind that and put it to use. Uh, the next item on the content side is uh, stories and experiences. So again, uh, this, you know, you have a, probably have a lot of stories uh, about your patients. You have a lot of case studies where, uh, you know, you have done some new procedures or new techniques, or maybe you have some new product that you have uh, at your clinic that you're offering and you have kind of been successful uh, with that product with some patients, yeah, put this together, right? I mean, you know, uh, everybody loves stories. Uh, they want to see uh, real patients, real case studies, um, and then that's how they relate uh, to that kind of procedure and that, the outcome, and they see themselves in it, right? So 
again, this is very, very useful in terms of content. And you know, I, and you know what I've put here together is all the content that you can put in as a doctor, only you know it, right? It's your business, it's your practice. You may hire a digital marketing agency, but they can write you, write blogs for you, which are generic. This is something that only you can provide. So if you have the time now, please use it and put this together. And it doesn't have to be polished. I mean, your marketing agency can polish the content, but those notes, that information is very important. So having covered the content, let's go to the next topic, which is uh, the annual marketing plan. And um, again, um, if you, let's just talk about what goes in an annual marketing plan, right? So this slide talks about the different terms. I mean, I'm sure pr probably you are aware of most of them. Offers are just flat discounts, package offers are you know, you package certain things, either multiple services or multiple sessions of the same service. And then you give some kind of uh, promotions like save 20% on six sessions or get five sessions and get six free, something like that, right? So that's package offers. But then there are some other ones like, you know, cross promotions. So I don't know, uh, you know, cross promotions is very underutilized in the market. I've seen that, but that's one of my favorites. I mean, uh, typically, I do not advise my clients to uh, discount themselves too much. Uh, you know, give a 20% discount, give a 15% discount. I mean, I, 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 I rather have my clients uh, do a cross promotion. So what's a cross promotion is you, uh, you, you're, you're giving, you, you're make, you, purchase, you purchase a particular procedure and you say that, okay, if you purchase that procedure or you, if you get that procedure with us, you get another one which is re related to it for free. So for example, is, you know, let's say if you get, you, know, you get 20 units of Botox free when you do five uh, sessions of let's say RF skin tightening, for example, or you can mix Botox with fillers. You can, you know, there are various ways of doing this. So the cross promotions is very, very, uh, that's one of my favorites. I mean, that works very well. It also kind of widens the, uh, the, 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 the different services that you're giving to that patient. You, you have a patient who's always coming to you for, let's say they're coming to you for, they start with radio frequency skin tightening. Now you introduce them to Botox by giving that free. And you know, that's how you can cross sell and upsell. And then there are, there are others like gift cards, sales events, seminars, and contests. I won't go through all of them in detail uh, at this time. But let's just now talk about, once we know what the ingredients of the marketing plan are, right? Let's talk about how, how do you make a marketing plan, right? So uh, again, if, if, you, if you are a clinic who has already, who was already ahead of this game and you have a marketing plan, uh, that's great. But again, at this time, you have to revisit it because things have changed. Uh, if you are a clinic who has not made a marketing plan, I mean, now is a good time to get started on that, right? I mean, there's any, any, any time is a good time to get started with the annual marketing plan. Even if it says annual, the, the word annual refers to, uh, you're really planning out a rolling 12 months. Uh, and why, why 12 months? Because that's the cycle, right? I mean, uh, within those 12 months, you get to see everything, right? There's, there's a wedding season that comes in, the summer comes in, holidays come in, school starts, all those things happen, right? Um, you know, the festivals coming in. So if you plan for that 12 months, you really covered everything. And that's why we, you know, we, we, we call it as an annual marketing plan, very important. Why do you need this AMP? I mean, you got to realize that marketing has a huge, huge impact on your net profitability. And let me, let, let me talk about uh, what is net profitability, right? So you, have, you got your sales. I mean, you, you know, you're, you're selling your services, you're selling your procedures, and that's generating revenue. And then you got your costs. So you're paying the uh, rent, you're paying salaries, maybe you're doing marketing, all those are expenses. So revenue minus your expenses is your profits, right? That's the money that uh, goes into your pocket as a clinic owner. And uh, if you don't watch that number, then obviously, uh, you know, you're not going to be successful as a business or even sustain for a very long time. Uh, so focusing on that, uh, net profitability is important. And, and that just kind of now goes into, okay, how do you 
plan your marketing and how, how do you put this plan together right what procedures are um, more profitable for you what procedures are uh, so that's why this cross promotions uh, which are the procedures where you are uh, making good revenue which are the procedures where you're losing money right i mean maybe there's some i don't know i'm just going to pick something hair transplant there are so many people there are so many shops today which are doing hair transplants and they are kind of have this race to the bottom right they're like dropping their prices and it's just becoming tough so you got to really decide who you are what you're doing and uh, what you need to plan Uh, in terms of your services how to promote them and that's how this whole marketing plan gets built towards one goal which is becoming profitable or increasing your profitability <clears throat> so the really really that's the plan you need that's why you need it um, there are just four kind of techniques that you would use which are proven i mean you would basically want to do like monthly cross promotions or contests on a every month basis do not discount i again say do not discount your services every month um discount only one time and the, the, you know when you want to discount is just uh, at a quarterly sales event so you know every every uh, quarter you can have a big discount but do not discount every month because that just kind of drops your um, value um weekly social media weekly e blast all that kind of goes together with the plan so having having done the uh, having done your marketing plan now in terms of execution how do you execute right i mean obviously as i talked about this weekly e blast email is not dead i mean if people are telling you that email is dead um i mean you are reading emails today you know probably you joined this call today you clicked on the link which was on the email uh, so there you are right i mean people are reading emails i mean actually in this time people are spending so much time on their devices that there is a great chance that they're going to read your email uh, use email marketing to the maximum in this time right it is cheap i mean it really doesn't cost much um so you you know you, you obviously you are kind of uh, right now in a difficult situation in terms of your finances there's no income coming in uh, this is a great way to you know uh, do marketing email uh, messages are important focus on the message of the email the subject line uh, make sure that it's very personal its email is a one to one communication right you're sending an email it's going to someone else make it like one <clears throat> personalize every email you send uh, and then most important is uh, track metrics on every email right so you need to know uh, the open rate the click rate how many people opened clicked uh, what how much time they're spending on the emails uh, and what devices what locations all this is important so email is important uh, and here here's an example for one of our clients so you know uh, how we have used we have mixed some channels here so what we have done, done is here's a client who has uh, put up a video on facebook now now you got to realize that uh, facebook is um, everybody is on facebook right now everybody has a lot of free time they are doing a lot of posts so you are competing in their news feed right facebook has a lot of content that is generated by users and you're competing in their news feed so how do you promote this video is well we have used email so we send email and you know this particular client is sitting on the database of thousands of emails uh, over the last 10 12 years that he's been practicing so you know that's a great thing if you have this large database of emails use them to cross promote this is an example we've used to mix these channels and drive traffic to this uh, video uh and this video is about i think covid uh, that he put up about 3 weeks ago the next one is social media i mean social media um you you cannot avoid social media today there are like billions of people on it every day every day you are you know every day you're touching your phone like 150 times a day right that's what you're doing i mean your phone is in your hand all the time and then you're going to social media and everybody is there so you got to you got to be there obviously i mean it's a necessary evil if even if you don't like social media you got to be on social media and you know studies have shown that uh, patients base their choice of the doctor that they want to go to um, you know they, they base that more on uh, the doctor's website ranking and the doctor's social media presence than the doctor's education skills and experience i mean it's it's something it's not a good thing but that's the reality 
So, you know, your, your degree, your education, your experience, that's on one side, but they also want to look at, okay, how do you look on Google? How do you look on social media? Uh, so that's why it's important. I mean, what is social media? I mean, again, the way I, I define social media, it's a channel to connect with your target audience and build their trust, right? What, what does not work on social media? Uh, direct sales does not work. I mean, I've seen a lot of uh, people who, have, who are like, uh, again, discounting their services and all the messages or the only messages they're really sending are 15% of this, 20% of that. It's not a channel for direct sales. It's definitely not a channel for direct sales. I mean, you could, you could talk about a procedure and you can educate them about how another procedure might be uh, complementary and useful, do those cross promotions, do those contexts. That is great. Um, what is really important on social media is engagement, right? So, I mean, that's why uh, you, need to, you need to produce, you need to put content that is engaging. You need to put content that gets you comments uh, gets you likes and gets you shares. Uh, it, it doesn't matter how many people you're reaching. It, it's really, you know, how many people are, uh, uh, you know, engaging with your post. That is what is important. And lastly, uh, we will talk about the website. So obviously your website is the single most you know, my marketing asset or the, you know, the, the biggest in investment in marketing that you would want to make, right? Because that is your uh, front face for your practice. I mean, even, even, even though there is social media and whatever, website is important. Website has a long form. Uh, you know, you can have a long form content on it. You can have a page which just goes on and on talking about some procedures. So you cannot, uh, and you know, you cannot fit all of that in social media. You just cannot, social media is a way you can drive traffic to your website. Well, website is very, very critical, right? Um, the uh, home page obviously is the biggest page, very important page. Clearly, you should state on your home page very clearly what your products and services are. I mean, don't put, I mean, even if you do a lot of things, uh, you need to really pick and choose what is important to you and put that on the home page. Uh, make it very simple, not very confusing. Uh, you know, um, you know, you should you should talk about your USP or your or your value proposition. Uh, you should uh, talk about how the users who are visiting your site can get started with you. So there should be a clear call to action, whether it's you know book an appointment with you. I mean, in these days, yes, book a virtual appointment with me, or maybe as you reopen, yeah, book an appointment for the clinic. If, you know, which location, all those things, right? Homepage, very important. And of course, the other pages then about us, contact us are as important as, as well. Service pages, I mean, yes, for every service that you provide, you should have a page um, and it should be really detailed. You should try to make it as unique as possible for you. Uh, you know, uh, the, these days, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of the marketing agencies, they have all the same content uh, picked up from uh, somewhere. Um, and that doesn't help you rank your website, right? And how do you make it unique is again, remember the content tips that I gave you before. Uh, it's your stories, it's your patients, it's your before afters, it's your uh, approach, it's your uh, videos, it's you talking, it's your patients talking, testimonials, all that is uh, what makes it unique. So uh, I guess uh, just a little over maybe, but I guess this is the end of our presentation. Um, uh, I, I don't know if Shil, I want to just transfer over to you. If there are any questions, this is the time to ask. Yes, questions. Mr. Harshal, thank you so much for that uh, session. But we have uh, questions that have come in, two questions. So one is from Essence Aesthetic Clinic. Uh, this came in at the time when you were briefing on your tips for content, where you mentioned okay. about, uh, you know, prepare a kind of a Q&A where your questions are exactly how patients normally ask and you respond also in a way that you normally respond to them in the clinic. So the query was that, is this kind of an approach to be taken for the website or for Google or for which platform? Well, I mean, uh, the way you want to look at content, content is content, right? I mean, you, you basically create the content and then you want to then distribute it. Definitely you want to put it on your website. So to answer that question, yes, this content that you create Q and A's is for your website. So uh, for every service page, you may, if you have a Q and A, then you can put all of that on your website. 
there are uh, technical ways where you can create some, uh, you know, mark the mark the metadata behind it so that Google can understand that that's a question a question and answer. But again, that's not just it, right? I mean, once you have this content, you can maybe post uh, them on Facebook uh, through one week. You can have one one or two questions asked every week and uh, have people comment on it, what they're thinking. You can use that content everywhere, right? I mean, obviously, website, you have to, but it's a content that is created. You can use it on your Facebook. You can use it on uh, as a video, as I said. You can put it into a video, right? Right. Uh, we also have a question from uh, Rajnikan Parmar on how do you see cosmetic practice after COVID-19? And do you really think that, you know, spending on marketing, investing in marketing during this crisis would help generate business? So, uh, again, uh, these are really unprecedented times, right? No one has seen them before. And... Um, so with this crisis, uh, obviously, it is also going to be followed by some kind of an economic crisis. I mean, there's no doubt about it, right? Because things have closed, people are getting, uh, people are probably losing jobs, uh, and people are getting worried about it. The stock markets are falling, they've lost some money, whatever it might be. So the outlook, I mean, um, the outlook is, um, well, um, People, uh, the people, you know, what you got to remember, I mean, the short term, of course, the, uh, there's going to be uh, impact because, again, all this aesthetic procedures that we talk about, they're all, um, as we call in the U.S., they're elective, they're electives, right? You don't have to do them. It's not like something you have to do them in an emergency. It's just because you want to look better, you want to do them. And um, uh, so that is going to be a little tough. But again, you got to remember that things are going to come back to normal obviously and uh, people uh, people always want to uh, see, see a better of themselves so they are going to come back uh, uh, in the short term uh, don't know to be honest with you but long term uh, yes definitely yes right and that's why i said when you're looking at marketing don't focus on the short don't invest anything in the short term tactics do invest in the long term so do invest in your content on your seo building a relationship, increasing your followers, whatever that might be, right? That is important. Uh, we have a question from Santosh Bhatia. Of course, he's uh, appreciated you on the presentation, saying it's a great one, and I agree. Uh, his question is, how does one change the annual maintenance plan based on the current scenario? Yes, so that's a good question. Um, and Santosh is my client, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> just, to, just want to be uh, upfront about it. Uh, <clears throat> so again, Satosh, um, uh, the annual marketing plan, as I said, right? I mean, uh, you know, you got to. How do you change it based on the current scenario? Um, you got to again. When you let's let's just let's just assume that we are all going to open up right soon, in sometime in May. Maybe not right after May third, but sometime in May we are going to open up. So when you're opening your clinic, uh, it's not that you're going to get a flood of people and you, you don't want to allow a flood of people to come into your clinic anyways, for safety reasons, right? I mean, you're going to assume that everybody who is walking into your clinic is COVID positive and you've got to take all these steps now before you even see him, see that person. So um, what, what you want to focus on is, again, what are the procedures uh, that um, uh, you know, someone who's coming, uh, someone who's going to entry, let's start with entry level proce uh, procedures, right? Something, you know, which is not very invasive and then uh, slowly bring those patients into um, uh, more in injectables maybe, and then maybe into surgery, right? So that's the, I mean, again, something is a plastic surgeon, so he does a lot of things. So I think that's my advice. I mean, that's how you would now change your plan, right? I mean, in a plan, you may want to, um, uh, start talking about those low, very minimally invasive procedures and get them started on that. Uh, again, that's the, because again, right, people probably do not want any injectables in them for whatever reason. They have this fear, hey, you know, I'm going to get the virus through the injectables, maybe. I, I don't know. I mean, there are so many concerns now, right? So um, that is how I look at it. And, you know, we have, to, uh, we have to change the plan. We have to adapt it. We have to keep looking at it every month and adapting it as per the period as it goes on. 
uh, another question again from Essence Aesthetic Clinic. Is it wise to spend money on platforms like JD or Practo or Librate or Google Ads? What is your take on this? So, um, platforms like uh, what was the what is the other platform? Practo and what? Practo, what Librate, Google Ads. Le uh, Librate. Okay. Yeah. See, these these are really directories. If you go to see, right? Librate, uh, Practo. Uh, these are really directories, right? And uh, I always, I mean, whether it's COVID or it's not COVID, my, my, my opinion is that you should not spend money, any money on those. I mean, they have a free listing, uh, which is fine, but you really should spend money on your building your own brand. I mean, someone is searching on Google today, you know, what you see is what clinic, Librate, uh, you know, India Mart and Practo, and I think why shouldn't doctors be listed there, right? Why shouldn't doctors' websites directly be listed there? So that's really my opinion about it um, from day one. It's not about this period. Mm. Well, I think that's it on our list. Any more questions from the attendees? What I'll do is maybe if we have some more questions coming in, I would just take uh, this time to add a few more details. Uh, to begin with, I would like to thank you, Mr. Harsha Lamai, for this informative session, for all your time. And uh, thank you all our attendees for your valuable time as well. If you want to view this session again or share it within your business circle, if you also missed the session yesterday that we had, the videos are available on our website, aestheticmed.in. On the coming Tuesday, which is April 21st, we have Dr. Ganesh Lakshmanan. He's the CEO and co-founder of Cairo Solutions India. Uh, he will be live with us speaking on why and how marketing is going to be the tool to business revival uh, amid economic and uh, business uncertainties and with perspective for the aesthetic fraternity, including the devices and the pharmaceutical companies. Uh, also to keep up to date on our latest articles and webinars, please subscribe to our weekly newsletter and uh, visit our website. Uh, I think the details of our website would be on the chat box as I speak. Uh, also, the digital edition of our magazine, uh, we're keeping it available during this period for download on our website. And I would take this platform to announce that we celebrate our anniversary month, Aesthetic Medicine's anniversary month in May. And the forthcoming anniversary edition will feature India's 100 dermatologists. So do log on to our website for your copy. Uh, we also have an annual industry event, AM India, which is an Expo Come conference scheduled for this year in September. Our dates for now are 26th, 27th at the Bombay Exhibition Center. Again, all the details on our website. And do subscribe to Aesthetic Medicine YouTube channel, follow us on Instagram, like us on Facebook. All the details to our social media handles are being shared by Hia Thakur on the chat box for your easy access. So thank you. Uh, we don't have any more questions coming in. So if we do, I'm sure you had your email ID shared at the end of the presentation and uh, they could connect with us as well to have any queries yeah. coming. In. Yes, I mean, if there are any more questions, uh, you know, please send an email at hello at mktg.doctor and I'll be happy to answer them. Um, I, I just want to thank everyone for joining this and uh, stay home, stay safe and stay healthy. Yes, definitely. Stay safe and everybody have a great evening. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.